close your eyes for just a minute. Are they closed? Great. Now imagine that you're floating through outer space. It would be totally dark if it weren't for those pinpoints of light all around you, distant stars. But wait, high overhead there's one star that's brighter than all of the others. And surrounding this star, smaller globes, planets. This star, the Sun, and those planets are your solar system, your place in space. Now, open your eyes. You don't need to imagine the solar system anymore. It's right there above your head. Turn it on, and the sun lights up and the planets move. Use your comet maker to project a comet swooshing around the sun. Want to learn more about the sun and its space family? Keep listening as we explore the solar system. What space objects belong to our solar system? How old is the solar system? Where did it come from? These are all really good questions. And some astronomers, the scientists who study space, spend a lot of time looking for answers. Here's what we know. The solar system includes the sun and everything that circles around it in paths called orbits. So that's a lot of stuff. The nine planets and all of their moons the millions of rocky bodies found in an area called the asteroid belt, and the countless icy snowballs or comets found far beyond the orbit of the farthest planet. Planets, moons, asteroids, comets, our solar system. But what keeps it all together in orbit around the sun? Why doesn't everything just float off in every direction? Gravity. Yes, gravity. That's the force that keeps you from floating up and hitting your head on the ceiling. But when it comes to the solar system, it's the sun's strong gravitational pull that keeps the planets and everything else circling around it. Our solar system didn't always look like this. Did you know that a really long time ago there was no solar system? No beautiful planets? No icy comets or rocky asteroids? Why, there wasn't even a sun! What was there? A huge, dark, spinning cloud of gas and dust. Scientists theorize that about 5 billion years ago, the cloud began to swirl around faster and gravity started pulling the gas and dust closer together. Everything began to flatten out, sort of like a disk of pizza dough, while the lump of matter at the center of the cloud got bigger and hotter. Finally, this lump got hot enough to start shining and our sun was born. The planets, moons, asteroids and comets formed from the leftover matter. It's not easy to measure the size of a solar system, but this will give you an idea of just how large it is. If Earth were the size of a grain of salt, the solar system would be as big as a sports stadium. The Sun is the star of our solar system family. Like all stars, the Sun is a huge ball of super hot gases. The reason our Sun is so bright is simple. It's close to us. And this is good because without the Sun's heat and light, it would be so dark and so cold on Earth that nothing could live and grow. No flowers or trees, no cats or dogs, and certainly no people. The Sun shines because it's always changing one kind of gas, hydrogen, into another gas, helium in a process called fusion. Deep at the center of the sun, the temperature is a sizzling 28 million degrees Fahrenheit. That's hot enough to melt anything. Things cool off at the surface of the sun where it's only about 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit. But that's still a lot hotter than your oven gets when you're baking cookies. It's never safe to look at the sun in the sky, even if you're wearing sunglasses. The sun is so bright that just a quick peek can hurt your eyes. Astronomers have safe ways of studying the sun, and they've discovered some pretty amazing things. Like sunspots, dark patches on the surface of the sun large enough to swallow up the Earth. Prominences, huge loops of hot gas that shoot out from the sun and thousands of miles into space. And solar wind, 
particles that travel from the sun to the earth and create the beautiful aurora borealis, or northern lights. Heading away from the sun, the first world we see is rocky, gray, and covered with craters. Mercury is the closest planet to the sun and the second smallest in the solar system. Picture this. Mercury is only one-third the diameter of Earth. So if we shrank Earth down to the size of a baseball, then Mercury would be a golf ball. Do you like birthday parties? Well, Mercury's the place for you. A year on Mercury, how long it takes Mercury to orbit around the sun once, is only 88 Earth days long. Because Mercury is so small, it doesn't have enough gravity to hold on to an atmosphere. Without air to even temperatures out, Mercury's sunny side reaches temperatures of 800 degrees Fahrenheit, and its night side drops to minus 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Space probes sent to Mercury have mapped half the planet, so we know that Mercury is covered with craters that formed when asteroids and smaller rocks slammed into the planet. The largest, Caloris Basin is a bowl-shaped crater wide enough to stretch halfway across North America. Traveling past Mercury, we come across cloudy Venus, the second planet in our solar system family. If you're looking for a fun place to visit, this isn't it. For one thing, it rains on Venus. What's a little rain, right? On Earth, it's no big deal. But on Venus, it rains sulfuric acid. So your umbrella wouldn't last long, and neither would you. Another problem is Venus's thick atmosphere of carbon dioxide. It's poisonous to breathe and presses down so heavily that you'd be crushed. And thanks to something called the greenhouse effect, Venus is the hottest planet. Like a heavy blanket you wrap around yourself to stay warm, Venus's carbon dioxide atmosphere surrounds the planet and traps the sun's heat. The temperature on the surface of Venus is 860 degrees Fahrenheit, hot enough to melt lead. Finally, if you visited Venus, you might get a little dizzy. Compared to Earth and most of the other planets, Venus spins backwards. First-time visitors to our solar system might wonder why we didn't call the Earth water. This might be a better name since it covers almost three-quarters of our planet. It's the oceans, lakes, and seas that make Earth so special. Without water, life can't exist. But Earth is teeming with life, from the smallest insect to the tallest tree to the thirstiest human being, all thanks to water. The Earth's moon isn't so lucky. Like Mercury, the moon is an airless, waterless, gray globe covered in craters. The only life the moon has seen are the 12 Apollo astronauts who dropped in for a visit over 30 years ago. Feel like visiting the moon yourself? Driving a car at highway speed, it would only take you 142 days, almost five months to get there. Better pack a good lunch and don't forget the water. Mars is the last of the small rocky inner planets. It's easy to see where it got the nickname, the Red Planet. Mars is red. Why? Its sandy soil has iron oxide in it, more commonly known as rust. Despite its color, Mars is the one planet most like Earth. Its day is only 40 minutes longer than one on Earth. Mars has changing seasons that make its ice caps grow and shrink. And even though we couldn't breathe it, Mars has a thin atmosphere. Mars also has a moon, two actually. Phobos and Deimos are thought to be asteroids that were captured by the planet's gravitational pull a long time ago. 
Phobos, the largest moon, is slowly spiraling closer to Mars. Astronomers believe it will eventually break apart and crash onto the surface of the red planet. Jupiter is the largest planet in the solar system. How big? Well, if Earth were a baseball, Jupiter would be a two-foot beach ball. While Jupiter has smelly clouds of ammonia and sulfur, it's really one big ball of hydrogen and helium, the same gases that make up the Sun. So why didn't Jupiter become a star? It ran out of gas when it was forming. Jupiter would need 80 times more gas before it could shine like a star. Jupiter has more moons than any other planet, at least 63. The famous astronomer Galileo discovered the four largest way back in 1610. What have we learned about these moons since their discovery? Callisto's cratered covered surface may be the oldest in the solar system. Ganymede is the solar system's largest moon, bigger than Pluto and Mercury. Io is the most volcanically active world we know of and future space probes may find liquid oceans under Europa's icy shell. The planet Saturn also has a lot of moons, at least 34. But Saturn is really famous because of its spectacular rings. They look solid, but these rings are actually made up of billions of icy chunks, most the size of hailstones and snowballs. The rings orbit the planet, trapped by Saturn's gravitational pull. The winds can really howl on the ringed planet. In certain places, they reach speeds of 800 miles per hour. And despite its size, second largest planet in the solar system, Saturn is a lightweight. Saturn would float if placed in water. Wow, that would have to be one big bathtub. Did you know that Uranus came very close to being called George? Yes, the seventh planet in our solar system nearly got stuck with the name George's star after King George III of England. Luckily, its discoverer couldn't get enough astronomers to agree with him, and Uranus was eventually named for the Roman god of the sky. Uranus was the first planet to be discovered with a telescope. In 1781, William Herschel spotted a blue-green dot, and the solar system suddenly got a lot bigger. Uranus is way out there, twice as far from the Sun as its neighbor Saturn is. And Uranus isn't alone. At least 26 moons circle the planet. Neptune was the first planet discovered by math. After studying Uranus's orbit, mathematicians predicted another large planet was out there. Astronomers found Neptune a year later, exactly where they were told to look. Neptune is the last of the four gas giants. Like the other three, Jupiter, Saturn, and Uranus, Neptune has a ring system and many moons, 13 that we know of. Uranus and Neptune are planetary twins. They're both four times the size of Earth, and they both have a poisonous methane atmosphere that presses down on a slushy ocean. At the center of each planet is a rocky core, Neptune's core is very hot, and astronomers believe this helps create the strong winds that whip around the planet. Which Pluto came first, the cartoon dog or the ninth planet? Answer, the planet. In 1930, an 11-year-old girl suggested the newly discovered planet be named Pluto for the Greek god of the underworld. Pluto the dog appeared in movie theaters later that same year, named in honor of the newest addition to our solar system family.
Because Pluto is so far away and no spacecraft has ever visited, we don't know a lot about it. We do know Pluto takes 248 Earth years to go around the Sun once. And we know that Pluto is very dark, very cold, and very small. Smaller than Mercury, even smaller than our Moon. Pluto and its one moon, Charon, circle each other, locked together in space like weightlifters' dumbbells. This special orbit means Charon always appears above the same spot on Pluto and doesn't go through phases like the Earth's moon. The solar system is an exciting place, and it's an exciting time for space exploration. We're still learning about the Sun and planets, and future space expeditions will tell us even more about the solar system's moons, asteroids, and comets. And don't forget, you can visit the solar system family anytime you like. Just open your eyes and look up.